Hi, everybody. Keith's here. Uh, Keith McGuire here. Uh, Mark Hicks is behind the camera and keeping an eye on me, keeping me uh, safe from harm uh, from an undisclosed uh, uh, secret bunker somewhere in uh, Michigan. That's all we're going to say. All right. Uh, we are continuing on our uh, little uh, fall scene here. Uh, not fall scene, but a fall scene. And uh, I'm going to continue from where I left off. I'm, I am uh, going to start over here. And I'm going to start, get the color in. I'm going to get a little color around the edges. Kind of fill in the color around the edges on this side also. And then maybe kind of dirty up the road a little bit. Um, use one of my very highly specialized brushes uh, if I have it. I think I still have it. Um, but uh, yeah, I have to, uh, um, I'm going to give it a try. I think it'll be very helpful to this scene. Anyway, let's get started. I'm going to use, uh, just getting started with a little uh, sap green. Mr. Sap Green. And while Keith's mixing up his paint, uh, if you didn't watch part one, the link to it's in the description as well as links to some of the materials Keith uses and the original black and white line drawing. So if you want to transfer it over to some watercolor paper and follow along, you may. Yeah, I yes. And it, at the very least, it's easier to kind of look at something and draw it you know, if you're going to do it on your own, do your own drawing. And it gives you an opportunity to change it up a little bit, you know, but hopefully not so weird that you, you're you not following what I'm doing anymore. Um, hmm. Like like Keith's random fence post. You don't, who wants that in that picture? Like, it doesn't make any sense. It, it's perfect. It's perfect. It's the, uh, the degrading of the... Uh, yeah, I don't have anything. Um, I just like a big spot. It looked dead. It looked like an empty spot, and it just needed something. I know you're thinking, well, why not a little kid or a, or a cow? But no. Dead foot, uh, fence posts are really easy to paint. I'm just, you know, putting that out there. So what are you saying? I'm a lazy artist. So I'm going to come in here with a little bit of shadow under the orange here. So I, I laid down a little bit of the, the sap green. And now I'm just coming in under this uh, bit of this orange here. Um, just want to get the feeling of a little bit of shadow of that dark color that's, uh, or the, you know, the shrubs above. Sounds like a movie. Now I'm going to come over with a little bit of orange. Whoa. Jinkies. Looks like somebody was murdered there. Yeah. I'm going to put the chalk outline. Um, I'm just going to bleed this out a little bit. <laughs> and hopefully, and this kind of re represents some of the dead leaf matter in the, in the gutter, so to speak. It even has a gutter. Um, yeah. And then as I come farther back here, I don't want it to get too dark. So I'm just going to do it just a little bit of color there. Let that kind of, it's barely any color actually. So should be okay. I'll be able to add to that. I don't want to get in too back, too too um, dark back there, because we want it to look like it's uh, you know fading out as as we go along the along the edge there. All right, uh, I'm going to go over here on this side. I'm just going to add a little more a little more texture to the ground. I have to figure out where my water is. All right. So I'm just going to drag a little, little more color over top of what's already here. The stuff that's already dry on there then kind of ends up being a little bit darker and it gives it the little bit of appearance of a 
rough road. A little, you know, a little texture to the side there. All right. And why am I using this tiny little brush? It's so cute. Oh, yeah. One thing I like about tiny little brushes is I can't overdo it. I was laughing because uh, I was watching a video on a guy. He was talking about how he inks comic books. Hmm. And one of his tools was the uh, King's Art number 10 brush. And then he went into the whole spiel about how they're no longer available and blah, blah, blah. Ah, but he's wrong. Yeah, he didn't know about the new... Uh... Right. Yeah, I, I did. I, I You know, I like my brush. I've used these, uh, a similar brush for years and years and years. I still think it's the same brush. But... Um... Um, what was the name of that? Lowell Cornell yep. was the name of the brush company, and all of a sudden they disappeared. And uh, lo and behold, just a little bit later, up pops King's Art, and they have, it's not only named about the same, it's, I mean, it's the exact same thing with a little change of color. Or, yeah, not, that was it. The Lowell Cornell he used, and yeah, he didn't know yes. that it's King's Art now. Yeah. So, yeah, I just, because I like a good stiff um, uh, Teclon. I like the I like the Teclon. But mm -hmm. I do a lot of, you know, fine line stuff. Um, so, you know, and I like a good point. So, yeah, I really like these brushes. Now, if you're more of a, you know, um, dibby-dabby kind of soft, you know, I would maybe get their rounds. It's just not the... Not the max round, but the regular round. It wouldn't be. It won't be quite as uh, sharp, and uh, so you can get a little softer effects. I get softer effects when I just add a little more uh, water to the water to the paint, actually. So as you can see, I'm just kind of filling in a little bit along the road here. Now, what I wanted to do before I really get to the road or anything and, and the tree um, is I wanted to kind of fill this in. I wanted to give it the feeling of, uh, you know, that there's a, you know, a clump of uh, shrubbery. No, a clump of whatever it is over there. Um, bright fall trees. I, I pick one. Maple. Yeah, there you go. That's a good one. Anyway. What I want to do, though, is I want to kind of give it a little bit of shadow here and there. So it looks like it's kind of, you know, some of the branches are forward in front of the trees. Some of the branches are, you know, back and maybe a little on the um, shadowy side because it's kind of deeper in. So I am going to try something very quickly. Um, it is ultramarine blue. And what I wanted to do is, since this is all kind of bright oranges, I wanted to see if I came in and if I hit it, ah, not there. All right. I just wanted to hit it with a little bit of the color just to kind of knock it down. And I think it's going to work. Ultramarine blue is just a very strange, wonderful color. I, it just... I use it for so many different things. And obviously, um, I mean, if I were to show you a different blue, or if I, I'm not even going to because then I'd have a nasty spot on my tree, on my trees. Um, for some reason, it just, it's a, it goes other, over other colors very nicely. Um, it mixes well with other colors very nicely. But as you can see, I'm kind of getting in here. I'm bringing this chunk. Oops, you can't see. Um, this chunk here, I'm trying to bring that up. And then I'm going to probably bring up another one over here. And I'm going to start pushing shadow back here a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead. Believe it or not, I'm going to start up here now. 
I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to come in here with a little bit of this ultramarine blue. There it is. <laughs> I swear my paint tray is just like a typewriter keyboard. I can't find anything. I've been typing forever and I still don't know where the Y is. I have to literally seek it out every single time. You I can't find God, the one letter that's practically smack dab in the middle of the keyboard? Yeah, exactly. But at, I'm hoping you can see. See how much this is grayed down now? Um, but I still have that little bit of color underneath. Uh, that's what I'm doing up here now. I'm just going to push a little shadow. We're going to push a little shadow back into these trees here. And there's a happy squirrel. And it's funny because it's just one of these colors that I don't... You got to figure, yes, um, you know, if I'm using the color wheel and I want to dull down some oranges and yellows, you know, especially orange, blue would be the one. But it's this, this interesting thing that, that it does, this... Uh, Ultramarine blue for some reason. Magic. So I'm going in, just going to hit a little darker here and there. All right. We do got a nice chunk of color on here, too. So and I like how this is breaking up now. You can see I, my trees are starting to come out a little bit. I want you to be able to see them. And what's going to happen is my little shadows are going to become, my little gray shadows here, are going to start getting more and more extreme here and there. Um, because I want there to be a good uh, from light to dark uh, situation here in this uh, wooded area. Okay. I am going to do a little more. Come up under here, I think, a little bit more. Yeah, all right. Now, for those that... Uh are newbies like myself why wouldn't you just use like a diluted black for all the shadows uh, it's um it doesn't it, watercolors don't mix well you know what i mean uh, with black <laughs> certain yellows it, it would just turn to mud it would just it would be ugly even if you were just using a washed down version of gray i guess you could a little bit but I just don't think it would be very pleasant. The color, when done, would be this kind of, you know, kind of really poopy, um, flat kind of gray that I don't think the color would just, I just don't think the color would bounce out of it. In fact, I know it doesn't. So what you want to do is you want to try to use, um, you want to try to use the, the complementary color. Is that what you're trying to bring up? Oh, in a roundabout way. Uh -huh. So you do know about colors. Yeah, he's. Uh, but Mark is trying to make a point, and that is um, by using the opposite color on the color wheel of red, the opposite is green on the color wheel, you add a little bit of green, it dulls it, raise it down. And... Uh, it really does work. Um, the only trick you have to be careful of is you want to make sure that it's like not all yellows and violets are going to mix properly, okay? You got to experiment with your paints a little bit. You're like a shadow in the in the in the back there. We what are you up to? I was trying to see if I could find one of my color wheels real fast. Uh, but I don't know where it is because I have too much stuff. Yeah, come on back. We're good. 
So you can look it up on the on the internet. It's easy peasy. Um, and you can print out one. There's like only a million of them out there too. But um, like I said, you just want to experiment with your yellow and your, you know, purple or your green and your red. And how much, you know, if you're trying to dull down a red, you don't want to use a lot of green. You'll end up, if you go too equal in color, you end up with black. So that is, in fact, one of the nicest, prettiest blacks is mixing. Um, I usually like going with a magenta and a, and a um, what's that other green? Oh, uh, a, a phthalo green. And uh, you get a really, you can get really shiny, pretty blacks instead of flat black, you know? Flat black. Great, now I'm hungry. Mm. I said fat back, didn't I? That's how I'm going to greet right. people from now on. I'm like, phthalo! Yeah. And see what they say. So, what I have... You can see how much that bright yellow reddish thing I had. I've now knocked the color down a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead while I, I'm at this point. And at this point, I'm going to let it dry. <laughs> I just realized it's still wet. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over and, and kind of work on the tree a little bit. And then we'll come back to this over here again. And maybe I can kind of fill in uh, the, little, uh, the little farmstead in the uh in the background there so i am going to start with i'm going to start that background with a little bit of a yellowy brown for my um some of the vegetation back here and it's not that not that bright just want to kind of push it back a little bit by not going too bright And I can always go in and add more color, different color, if you know, to change up the trees a little bit, which I will. I'm just kind of getting a, a base coat of yellow in there. No, I didn't wet it. It's a tiny little surface, you know. You can hit it with your brush, with a wet brush. So you don't have to do that every single time. If you're working on large surfaces, I do recommend that you, you know, wet the paper before you start applying paint. It just makes it move. A little bit easier okay so I got a little more in there I don't look as pretty on, on the screen yet but I think it's because it's still wet I don't think the color shines up too good so we'll give that a minute um, I'm just mixing up a few colors here I just wanted to kind of get a little bit of maybe a little brighter a little shadowy along the base here just adding a little bit of color and a little on this side and I can always I can always add more and if it's too much I can always back up I kind of think it's gonna be fine I think it'll dry light enough uh, meantime I am going to add a little more of my dead leaves along the edges just get a little more of that color down If I'm gonna jinx this or not I'm gonna try though I think we're almost unjinxable but uh, just to let you guys know uh, we are from Michigan at this time and uh, I just wanted to point out that uh, Detroit uh, Lions are actually playing football now And then, how long before we can start bragging is what I want to do. 
Because uh, after 50 years of sitting around waiting for something to happen. I don't know. They've they've tricked us before. They've been to Vision <laughs> Champs and got our hopes up just to shoot the bed. Yep. Down we go. But I was also uh, a part of the... <laughs> I was part of the... Uh, Tampa Bay team when they first started and Seattle was going, you know, they were the other expansion team. They went straight to the playoffs and uh, Tampa Bay didn't win a game for like two and a half years. It was we used to have shirts with Buccaneer ships sinking into the water, go for O and whatever that was. Hmm. But it was very nice to see them uh, uh, beat Tampa Bay too. There was a quiet satisfaction in that um see i just figure if if more people would buy ford made cars then the ford family would have more money and then maybe they would ah. just buy a pro team like all the other uh franchises that would be that would be different because i don't for i don't <laughs> i don't think there's another team that's gotten more first round draft picks in the history of the NFL than the Lions and completely, you know, screwed it up every time. Wait, wait, wait. What about the. Uh, 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 wait, I got one. Uh, I'm thinking about it. Arizona. What? What's. Phoenix. No, what's the name of the. Cardinals. No? I don't remember if Car Cardinals football is Cardinals baseball. Yeah, that's baseball, but uh, it's uh, oh god, I can't think. That's embarrassing. Oh well, Suns or um, basketball? Yeah, I can't. But think they were, them. they were also equally as crappy for so many years, and squandered so many good uh, first round draft picks too. I don't think Detroit was the only, only bad one. All right, I'm starting to. What? I think I put a weird blue in my. Do I got the right color? Ah! Now I do. All right. So I'm just going in and starting to you know, push up some trees here into the into the canopies. Mm, the canopies. Ooh. All right. I'm going to add a few more here. Just get them going. It's here somewhere. There it is. Indigo. Want something with a little more value here. Can you see me? Uh, I can see your painting. I okay. Know, you... I mean, you can see what I'm doing. I'm, my hand's not. Yeah. Okay. Too badly in the way. I'm trying to. Wish I could figure out a cool technique, but. Transparent hands. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to come down below, see if we can pop a couple, maybe I'm thinking, you know, a couple of the bases down here, but not, don't take it all the way to the, uh, to the ground here. This can be something a little farther back with other things. I think I'll, to make it continue. I'll have a little bit in here, too. Because after this, what I, now it looks kind of pale and washed out now that we've got some other values in there. What we're going to do is we're going to kind of make 
individual leaves and try to kind of brighten it up a little bit again. And in the meantime, I'm my branches are getting a little bit darker because I'm trying to get a little more foreground color going here. So I don't want them disappearing. These are the ones that are kind of up front here. So, all right. Yeah, I could fill things with twigs all day. Mm. All right. Now we're going to take our paint. I'm going to build up some brighter color here. And what I want to do is kind of make more kind of individual splats of not uh, not individual leaves but like clumps of color of of different leaf clumps of leaves in front here we want them to be a little bit darker a little bit brighter i'm testing out my colors now but you know, you can use like little squares, little shapes, whatever, you know, little triangles, whatever you're comfortable with. But you can kind of see I'm working a little on the bigger side. These chunks are nice clumps, clumps of color, okay? And you can vary the color too in, in them. But I would wait until... You know, get a, a layer on, get another layer on. You know, don't try to don't try to do it all at once. That's where you get in trouble a lot of times. That's when it all becomes just a big plump, a big blob of color then. And that's what I'm doing is. And then what I like to do is every once in a while, I'll take some of them and I'll just kind of wet them down just a little bit, just so they have a little softer... A little softer touch. I don't know what it is. I today I keep wanting to break into uh, Bob Ross. Okay. We're gonna see a happy squirrel here. All right. I want you to go binge watch him on YouTube, and then get it out of your system. No, come on. Yes. I've never watched him. That's so weird. I mean, I've seen clips of him a hundred times. I've never sat down and actually watched him. A, I don't do acrylics, you know, so I don't really, I'm not that yeah. into it. They told me at one point, somebody told me he had a squirrel mm -hmm. and I went, you're, you're kidding, right? You know, I thought they were joking and they, they weren't. He really, yeah. I have a pet crayfish. I'll, a uh, couple more months, I think I can get them out and show them to you guys. Why? What's he doing now? Uh, mostly growing. It's kind of funny. He was part of my little, uh, I had a little nature art class, a naturalist art class with uh, some younger students, and it was a blast. Um, we'd go to this little creek and gather little whatevers to draw. <laughs> uh, we found snakes, but what we did find a lot of was tiny little crayfish and uh i decided to keep the last batch there was five of them in the batch and one by one they kept disappearing you know as far as they you know pass away and the very last one was the littlest one the one that hid all the time so now he's by himself and it's really cool because he gets all the food and he's like every week <laughs> he sheds his skin and grows another you know so he's like you know 10 times what he was so i figure another month i'll be having lobster and yeah, uh he'll be about the size of a cat yeah exactly and whatever he wants then you know because you got claws like you know mm -hmm. you gotta you gotta listen so i don't know if you can see what i'm doing i'm I'm pushing, uh, I'm pushing in uh, some of this brighter color over this, some of the duller stuff now. 
And I want to be careful that I don't over overdo this. It's easy to overdo. And I also, like I said, I like to come in every once in a while and knock that hard edge off of one side. See, I blend the bottom half, leave the sharp edges on top, and I'm blending away. And it's just, you know, another little gimmick to give it a, uh, a more, I think, natural sha shadowing, basically. All right, now, I may have overdone that. I'm going to try a little bit of crimson or uh, uh, magenta. I'm going to try that with a little bit of the orange again. I'm hoping this ain't going to be too much. We'll find out in a minute. But the idea is you want to just keep breaking it up a little bit here and there, here and there. The closer stuff make the little chunks bigger. And as you get farther away, you want it like back here. You know, I'm only making little tiny little spots up here. I'm, you know, creating little quarter inch blocks of color there. And I think the other part of this is be careful that you don't um, overdo it. Just get to a point. You can always add more, you know. Um, but I think it's always good to kind of get back, look at it a little bit, and go, maybe I should stop for a minute and ponder. All right. So. Uh, okay. I am going to now drag a, more of that kind of leaf litter on this side, a little bit more. And then, like I said, as I go farther back, I want it to kind of just fade a little bit so it doesn't get too, too the same value. We want the value in the front to be just a, you know, a wee bit darker. Maybe not this dark, but I'm just adding shame. a different color. Shame different on color. This, shame on this farmer for not picking up his leaf litter. Oh man, isn't that what cows are for? I don't think. We were talking. I lived on a farm. Not a real farm, I don't think. We call it a gentleman's farm. We call it an eater's farm, I think. Uh, my dad moved us. We had eight kids in my family. So he, like, moved us out on a farm. And he was a pretty good businessman. So he'd go into work. And uh, and then on the weekends, he was, you know, gentleman farmer. Um, buying lots of cows and pigs and stuff like that. And... And having, you know, forced labor to do his work for him. That's what children are for. My son escaped, unfortunately. But um, there's still a chance. I could still get him. But it was uh, it was a great, uh, uh, it was fun. But uh, we were talking about eating. <laughs> eating our, uh, they were our pets. We loved them, you know. But we didn't name them. We never named anything. To this day, I still call everything cat and dog, you know. Hmm. Just assume that I might be eating it. I don't know. So, Well, and at least you can identify your animals still. When you start calling them the wrong <laughs> name, then we got to worry about you. Yep. That's, uh, didn't you say you had a home picked out? Yep. <sighs> it's on a farm, Keith. It's really nice. Mm. <laughs> You're going to love it. All right. So you can kind of see we're... Kind of rounding the corner here. Um, I want to do a little, I'm going to take a break. We're going to go over and we're going to work on the tree a little bit. Then I'm going to probably come in and kind of finish this out. But I want to, let's get some value on this guy. Um, I am looking for possibly, ah, a bigger brush, a little bigger brush. Okay, so 
all I really want to do is is bring up some of the value, um, get some texture. I've got some great fun color in here, you know, how it bled and you get all these weird little um, bleeds. I like uh, turning those into, uh, you know, stuff. So I also see I painted over something that should have been sky. Oh, no. And we might try to pull a little bit of that out. Uh, but for right now, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to go ahead and do this tree, see if we can get it out out a little more. A little more value. I like to leave some of the white on there. I like leaving, you know, some of the gray. Makes it look like, uh, what are they called? Um, lichens. Man. When are we going to get that, uh, uh, what do you call that thing? Uh, Alzheimer's test kit. Um, you, can, you can do a quick check. It'll be delivered Tuesday. I ordered it on Amazon already. <laughs> I've been waiting for you. <laughs> we have another artist ready to go. He's uh, He knows the names of stuff. It's R.L. McGuire. Yeah. <laughs> We don't have to change a lot. <laughs> we just keep going. There is another artist, uh, another Keith McGuire, who uh, does not sign his name like me. I have a, something a little different. But what I think is amazing is the way he signs it. His his signature is exactly how I write. You know, he, he it has a very draftsman look to it. And uh, wow, I was. People uh, have been sending me stuff. Oh, Mr. McGuire, we bought this in 1982. And I'm like, oh, okay. And I'm looking at him going, nope, not one of me. So after the fourth time I did, I finally figured out where he was and been trying to point people in his direction. He, he, he really was. He did a lot of, like, uh, what do you call it? Uh, fish, fly fishermen, you know, stuff like that. So... So if you're thinking you have one of mine, mine will be an old building with dead stuff around it. Or a bird, right? Or a turtle. Or a turtle. So you, as you can see, I've been slowly kind of just pushing the value on this side. And I don't do it all at once. I... I just work little little chunks. And then on this side, basically, I'm just going to be mostly just pulling lines down, kind of make it look like bark. And as you're pulling it down, you can, uh, you, know, you can vary the weight. You can kind of change the direction a little bit. And now I'm going to soften this. Uh, I'm just kind of wetting it all down because I don't want any super hard lines. Not that it would be horrible. Also, this white little edge I had there, that's, I think that's got to go. All right. All right, that's, we'll let that, we'll work on that one. Um, although I want to put a big punch of kind of a burnt sienna in here on this side. Yeah. Just kind of getting a possibly a little bit of a warm light. I'm going to add a little bit of orange. Okay, I'm going to add a lot of orange. Surprise. Ah, it's a pumpkin spice tree. Yep. Right in time, too. Yep, with Thanksgiving coming up. 
watch uh, the Lions play somebody on uh, Thanksgiving Day. See, I keep bringing them Lions back. All right. Actually, it's kind of, I like that. Kind of gives you an, a, almost a, a bit of a direction for the sun, too. It's got this warm color maybe coming this way. Which probably means I'm going to end up pushing a shadow across here from the tree. Um, which we'll get to. Um, I'm going to get to this other tree, though. Just add a little bit of indigo, a little bit of burnt sienna. See if I can Yeah. Indigo. Where is I'm also pulling up a little um I want to vary the color of the tree a little bit just so that it kinda is gonna stand out from the other tree which I went very golden on this one side so you're not gonna see much that you won't see hardly any of that on this tree maybe down this edge I'll grab a little now suddenly all those little squiggles and wiggles now look like bark and texture and then I will go back in again. Ooh, that's a little dark. That's a lot of paint on the tip there. But I, what I want to do is I want to see if I can get enough value. I think it's still too wet. I can't really do any fine line work, but I can at least get a little shadow going here. All right. I'm going to try the little bit of orange on the back end of this one. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I should get the soft cup. Um, all right, I'm gonna, I have to let it set for a minute. I'm gonna come in here with a very light gray, yellow, green. I'm gonna pick up this little bit of color here that didn't get done. I think I'm going to add just a little bit of ultramarine blue to this field, too. I think what I want to try is to make this all feel a little grayed out back here. And then I need... Ha! Ah. Nope. I gotta go. I'll be back. Bye. One second. There's always something. Now I just want to put a coat over it and then lift it. And, yeah. Oops. Guess I lifted a little tree, too. Now I gotta, I guess it's okay. Good. All right. So, now you can see that's a little more grayed back there. And what I'm gonna do, real quick, is uh, I'm gonna take a little of the ultramarine again. You can't see that, but 
I'm just kind of wetting down the some ultramarine real wet because I just want to kind of use a little bit more blue in here kind of just fade it back there a little bit more hmm. have Same you in. seen the uh, the watercolor brush cleaning apparatus on Amazon no so it's a it's a container and you screw in like a water bottle kind of like you ever seen like those self-watering pet bowls yeah right so it's got a big water reservoir the container you clean in the container and then it's got a little lever that then flushes the old water down into a separate container and then once it closes the reservoir fills just a, a light layer of clean water again. All right. That sounds like an overly complicated Japanese toilet, too. Don't it? Kind of. Probably built on the same <laughs> system. They were like, hey, it works for toilets. Let's make a yep. small one for brushes. But Well, I just I, think it's... Uh, yeah. But it always gives you that clean... Uh, Fresh water. clean water for rinsing your brushes and then not worrying about tainting or tinting the next thing you do when you do a wash. Excuse me, I'm... Is my camera... Hang on. Sorry, oh. guys. Yeah. I was just wondering if the... It seems a little perspective screwed. Skewed. Anyway, I don't think it's going to hurt anything. All right. Um, I am going to go in. See this little section? There's a little section here and here. I'm thinking of putting, uh, I don't want it to all be gold. I want a little green in there too. So I'm going to add a couple more trees that haven't, these probably are the, the other maples that never, they wait till winter before their leaves fall off. There we go. Tough little guys. All right. So, all right. So, I got to let that dry. And we'll start breaking up the colors on those. Um, I am going to add just maybe a hair more green back here. Just, uh, I guess I got to put some green in that hole. Yeah, I don't know if, uh, come on, focus. Come on. Uh, my exposure's too high, I'll have to say. Yeah. And I can't quite, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, I can see that. But that is weird, sorry. But you got to <laughs> figure I'm old. And they're not that expensive. It's almost worth buying one just to try it. Do a, a, a do an opening. There we do go. our first. We can unboxing. do our first unboxing. Watercolor unboxing. Oh my god. Yeah, they're like twelve bucks or something. I'll put a link oh, in wow. the description if anybody wants to try one out before we get one. But wait, wait, we'll do an unboxing. It'll be cooler. Yeah. I think right. the only issue with it is it's hard to tell in the photos, but I don't imagine it's very big. So I don't know how often like you'd be like, oh, crap, I got to add water. Oh, no, the bottom reservoir is filling up already. I got to go empty that now, too. And you spend almost as much time, you know, dumping and refilling as you right. would a mason jar. Yeah. I'm also thinking, yeah, you may you may have saved yourself two trips, yeah. which if your kitchen ain't that far away. Um, well, that's why I want to see one and 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 modify it. Like, see, can I attach a bigger <laughs> bottle? And then it does have a drain hole in the bottom, and just run a little tube into like a five gallon bucket, and there you have go. to change it like once a month, or just refill once a month. They'd be All like, right. Mark, why did you take up? watercolor painting i'm like well i got this cool brush cleaner i can't let it go That's to waste fun. all right so i just flipped this upside down i just wanted to oh boy what i just we're in the upside down well, while you were talking i i, I quietly 
flipped it over. I figured nobody would notice. They'd all be looking at you. Right? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I'm just adding, like I said, a little more texture. I like kind of running it up there. All right. There. Oh, other question I had for you. Because yeah. cause you use traditional blue painter's tape all the time. Yeah. Have you tried the green paint tape, the lower, lower tack, the, but it's supposed the, to have the paint seal for even cleaner edges? Um. Well, I'll tell you what. I have used it, and it's great. But at the same time, it seems like it's like double the price of blue tape. Yes. And... And that's, you know, as an artist, we are cheap little buzzards. Um, unless you're a real successful artist. But, uh, yeah, I think uh, it, it does. I'm not, I'm not thrilled uh, with the cost. <laughs> so I like this. But I have to admit, I think the... There's some, you know, cheap brands out there that, yeah, you're right. They're not that good. The Scott, is it, what is it? The Scott, uh, Scotch brand? Yes, yeah, Scotch is who I usually purchase. Yes, and, and they are. They're, you know, it's, it's good stuff. It's consistent. And I do. I use it for the edges. And, I, you know, I don't usually have any trouble. Um some of the cheaper stuff on occasion has uh, pulled up my paper, you know, tore the paper a little bit, but it was kind of like around the edge, you know, up in the edge around the tape. So I was okay with that. Mm -hmm. um, I could live with that. But, uh, ooh, it's a tiny little building. So you think it's off in the distance, but it's not, it's just, Two tiny little buildings about there. five feet away. There you go. Little kid's toy. Yeah. So I'm just kind of filling in. Yeah, I haven't done that in a while. I got to go play with that. I haven't done any forced perspective photography in a while. Yeah. I'm, you know, I love... I used to like when we head out and do the, when you go photographing, um, that was, I'm not, it's kind of weird. I'm not, I, to me, it's more like just reference material, you know? And, mm -hmm. and when I go with a photographer, it's like going with an artist. It's very nice. You learn, you know? So yeah, I wouldn't mind doing that again. I'm also, I'm going to see if I can. Maybe I should. Uh, not yet. I just remembered. I gotta. I gotta get a little, little dirt going in here. So while those are drying, I think I'm gonna make this one darker. That one will stay lighter. That'll stay a little lighter. I'm gonna see if I can maybe get a little. A little yellow into it too. I just want it to be a little bit different than the other one. I think when when it's wet on the, it's kind of hard to tell the difference. But once it dries up, you guys, I think it's you're able to see. All right, a little more green. I just want to mention we're coming up on about an hour again. Oh no. Okay. Um, so I don't know if we want to stop or, or find a logical ending point and then we'll finish up like the road and some details in the next episode. Yeah, I think you're right. Because if I start rushing now, that's what I hate when, you know, I'm trying to get her done under a certain time limit. That's usually when I start kind of screwing up too. So I could handle that. I could handle waiting until next yeah. time. 
Yeah, finish up whatever you think is, uh, you know, logical right now. Or, Well, all I'm going to do is kind of wet this up a little bit. That's all I'm doing. Is just I just want to get a little green back in there again so that it isn't all green. I'm also going to just throw, because I got some green up here, that, and I also want to maybe just get a little bit of green up here too, just here and there, just so you can kind of, yeah, yeah, that's it. But yeah, all right. Well, Mark, Mark's kicking me out. Get so, out of my computer screen. Yeah, I am. I am totally prepared though to finish this up next time. It won't take another hour. It'll take at the most a half hour, I would say. But uh, this is what happens painting in real time. Uh, but there is, you know, we can add a lot more detail everywhere, basically. And I would like to do that because this is, it's starting to get where I want it to be, but it ain't, there's still some time involved. So, alrighty. Um, I will see you uh, next time. Sounds Correct. good. Make sure you guys and check the description. There's all kinds of links and stuff written down there. I'm not going to recite it all. You can read and right, you can good. read and you can read and you can read. Yeah. And, oh, the other thing was uh, I, I had a call from somebody do we have a, a, a supply list? Uh, there was one on the site. I'd have to double check and make sure. No, I'm going to have to. I'll, I'll double check too. But yeah, uh, no matter what uh, person who wrote today, and you, you won't know who you are. Um, what? <laughs> uh, we will make sure that there is a list of things that I like. Okay. And uh, it'll it'll be in there with the, uh, uh, what do you call that? The, the go-bys? Yeah. Black, yeah. The black and white go buys. Okay. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mark. We will see you next time. Bye. Bye bye.